Good morning. Good afternoon, everyone. How are you? So how was your break a while ago? And how was our uh, these uh, three or four sessions this morning? I hope everything's well. Well, for today, uh, we would like to work, welcome you for the RBR COB Research Colloquium. I'm your moderator for this afternoon. I'm Mary Grace D. And uh, together with me, is uh, co-moderator is Joseph. So Joseph would be monitoring our FB um, stream, and I'll be monitoring from the Zoom sessions. Just a reminder, though, to all participants, please mute um, your mic so we would just hear the, the speaker, and we won't uh, have some interruptions uh, on the background. Also, we would like to encourage everyone um, at the end of the um, uh, the three-day seminar that you uh, accomplish or even now um, later on to accomplish also our our uh, survey or our feedback form please stay tuned and we, we, we actually stored a lot for you um, so for for the questions um, please do um, go to slido and we will be monitoring the questions there so that's www.slido.com uh, to post your question and put in the event code, which is hashtag DLSU RESCON 2020 underscore RC. Okay, please do enter your name and your question. And if you see questions similar to yours, you can probably uh, put a thumb mark or like it. Okay. For our first speaker for today, um, to talk about uh, making the pivot to digital marketing is Ms. Chai. Mandihar Sapatel. She's the client partner at Facebook. Ms. Shai has a unique background. Uh, she, she joined Facebook uh, as a client partner after her stint as a general manager of the global advertising agency Wonderman. Prior uh, to that, she had been uh, an, she owned a startup company named Chimes Digital Marketing Solutions in 2009 and was already advocating for brands to embed the digital in their marketing plans back then where it wasn't that fashionable as now before that she was with technology companies microsoft unisys and so on although she forayed into the marketing and advertising industry she never did let go of her roots embedded she completed her degree um, in computer studies or ccs as we call uh, we would call it now so without further ado, uh, let us welcome Ms. Chai Mandihar Sapotel uh, for the making the pivot to digital marketing. Hi, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, how's everyone doing? Um, yeah, super proud to be here. Uh, I am actually a proud Lassa Light. Back when um, Gokong Wei was still called intellect. I don't know who among you, at least the ones in Zoom, who among you knows that um, Gokong Wei actually used to be called intellect? No? <laughs> so happy to be here and um, glad to be part of this, um, uh, the DLSU Congress, uh, Research Congress. So just checking if um, people could see my screen. Hopefully you can. Um, let me just check the chat here. Uh, uh, let me give me. Uh, just to interrupt a bit, uh, we encourage the participants in uh, Zoom and also in FB to uh, participate in our discussion. You can place in comments or you can tell that if you agree to what Ms. Chai is saying or you can perhaps give your opinion. So this, we would make this uh, particular session an interactive one, okay? Perfect. Okay. So yeah, I could see your chat. I could see both from the live session and the page of DLSU Research Congress. I, open, I can also see the ones from Zoom. So as I said, good afternoon, everyone. I'm Chai Mondihar Saputil. I'm a proud College of Computer Studies graduate. I don't know if um, uh, Dean Raymond Season is here, but um, we were his first class when um, just after he graduated um, uh, Computer Studies, we were one of his first classes. Um, if you're interested to talk more to me after the session, my handle is chaims at IG. So I'm here to talk about how I can help or actually if you have questions on how you can pivot into digital marketing. But before that, I'm not quite sure if everyone is aware, 
but um, uh, our mission in Facebook is actually to give people the power to build community and bring the world closer together. So everything that we talk about, every feature that you see in Facebook, every function, um, every uh, narrative that you hear from Facebook is actually anchored on this mission that we want to build communities and bring the world closer together. Just a quick trivia. Prior to this, um, the mission was just actually to connect the world. Um, but a couple of years back, two, three years ago, we decided it wasn't enough to just connect the world. Um, it doesn't mean anything if you just connect people, but it has to have a purpose. And that the pur and that purpose is to actually build a community and bring the world closer together. Now, um, we're here to talk about actually um, uh, pivoting to digital marketing, but more often than not, when I talk to my clients about it, people forget what marketing is about. So I'm, I'm actually, you know, curious. And for those who are in Zoom or actually on the DLSU Research Congress page, I would love to hear what do you think is marketing, right? What is marketing? Is it just about talking about your product? Um, essentially, uh, if we step back on what marketing is about, it's when you have a product or a service and you want someone to be aware of your product or service, uh, but not just to be aware, you want them to choose you and you want them to buy you, right? So marketing is all about, um, in a way, making people aware of a product of ser or a service uh, that you have. If you think about marketing that way, then it's not necessarily a tangible product. Anyone who has an idea actually can be a marketeer. So yeah, it is. Thank you for that, Mark. It's the business of promoting selling product of, or services. So that's the core of marketing. Now, if you look into how we traditionally see marketing, number one is we want to drive awareness, right? Um, for those in the same genre as me, I don't know if you could raise your hands and see, I could see it in the chat. Um, there used to be a movie, Field of Dreams. They said, if you build it, they will come. There's the notion that just because you have a good product or a good service, people will naturally know about you or your product or your service. But it's no longer true. Um, there's so many products and services uh, available out there. You need to have an activity to make people aware of your product or service. So that's number one. Number two, consideration. Um, not only do you need people to know about your product or service or your idea, but you want them to choose you versus your competitor versus someone who is offering the similar product or service. So that's what we call consideration. Evaluation is when they check whether this is, uh, your product or service really fits your need, but the ultimate, ultimate objective whether it's selling idea or selling a ticket or selling a product is purchase. No matter how much you spend on a marketing campaign, if you're not able to drive your target audience to purchase, then it fails, right? So I wanted to start essentially with that in terms of the, the discipline of marketing. Now, the thing is this concept of awareness, consideration, evaluation, purchase, prior to digital, that used to be linear. When I say linear, one follows after another. You first want to drive awareness, then you drive consideration, then you drive evaluation, so much and so forth. However, if you look at the digital uh, landscape right now, it's no longer linear. I mean, just look at your own experience. Sometimes uh, you, you just saw uh, a, something on your feed, you just discover in your feed without even any intent, and you buy it. So you skip from discovering to purchase. Or sometimes you've been hit so much about it, uh, that you've seen a lot of ad about it, and it's still not convincing you to buy. Or in many cases, um, you just sort of like start talking to the person who's baking the cookie, and then that already convinced you to, to, to go and buy. So it's no longer linear. In fact, it's now a complicated process of going from one stage to the other. Another phenomenon that we're seeing um, during this digital age is it used to be when you say, I'm going shopping, you know, you plan your activity, right? Um, you're going to say, hey, this weekend, I no longer have toothpaste or uh, shampoo, so I'm going to go to the grocery this weekend and buy it now. 
However, again, one of the things that's happening in, 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 the, in the landscape right now is that it's no longer planned. You can practically go shopping anytime. A hey, hi, JLI from Kamsur, Bicol. So we have an audience from, from Bicol. So um, yeah, so now it's coming from I'm going shopping to a planned activity to something that's now I'm gonna shop now. And I can do it using my phone, using my laptop, using my PC. And one other phenomenon that we're seeing right now is that at least um, uh, because that the content is now so personalized, um, people now want to be in control. Uh, people want variety. They want uh, uh, products to be available instantly. And rather than me going somewhere to get what I want, I want that product or services to come to me. So these are some of the phenomena um, that we see happening, especially uh, during this um, uh, digital economy and then the change in, in, the, in terms of adoption of digital. But then again, I pull you back. If you were a marketeer, what would be one of your first objectives? I would say as a marketeer, one of your first objective is to reach the people you want to talk to and you have to be present where they are. So let's not even talk about digital. So if you were, say your target audience were, um, you know, pre-COVID, pre-COVID, your target audience were commuters. Then you want to be present where the commuters are, maybe in the MRTs, LRTs, or then some mga jeepney stations, right? So you want to be present where they are. Or think about uh, your target audience maybe being, um, say, uh, travelers, right? If they're travelers, you want to, to go where pe oh, travelers look for information. Perhaps you can go to where um, travel agencies or where people are looking for uh, places where they can go. So, so you have to reach your customers and be present where they are. Now, the thing about us in, in terms of the digital landscape is Filipinos are so engaged in technology. And if you ask the question, where are we? What are we doing right now? Where are we? Where is our attention? Would you believe we're actually, I, I, I found out earlier this year, there were, were already the number one time spent on internet daily in the world. So um, why is that? Uh, I mean, there's just, the, I, 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 if I were an anthropologist, if we have any anthropologists in the audience, I would love to know. I mean, we were the number one SMS country, number one Friendster, number one Multiply. And, you know, we were, we were actually one of the biggest um, uh, uh, countries where we have a very, very high population of Facebook users in the Philippines. So, so we are engaged with technology. We spend an average of four hours a day on mobile. And, and that data is nationwide, huh? I, I dare say that if we even look at the urban or in the cities, this number is much, much higher. And 87% of Filipino inter internet uh, users are actually on social networks. So, so this says a lot with how we are connected in terms of te technology, on, in terms of how we are actually on digital. We are using the digital uh, um, sort, sort of uh, technology. But the question that has always been asked of me, especially when I started out in Facebook, and people are saying, hey, maybe the only people who are in Facebook are the ones in the cities. Maybe they are the ones who are part of the upper strata or the upper SEC. So we also wanted to find out if, if um, we had the same reach in, in the rural areas as we had in the urban areas. So what we did was we embarked um, on a study. Of, we partnered with Bay to really understand the different consumer segments in the Philippines and if we can really reach them, if they're on our platform. So um, just going through some, some uh, information on this. If you look at the, the Philippines economic class, this is super interesting. So um, AB, you can't even see it. I don't know if you could see it in the screen. AB is a small, small slither of this pie. So that's the, and, and I dare say, because you are here, you're probably part of that AB. C is the green part of the pie. D, the purple one, is the biggest. And E is uh, the orange one. So if you can't read it in your, in your um, screens. So if we 
look at this, 60% of the Philippine population is actually on SECD. So that's the biggest population that we have in the Philippines. Now, if you break up that um, 58% into urban and rural, about 58% actually belong to the rural uh, area, and then 42%, it's about 60-40 a split, belongs to the urban area. So this was the question that we wanted to ask. Are they on digital? Are they using the platforms? And this is super interesting information that we got. So on the question on what activities where SECD uh, consumers are doing on the platform, um, walking you through this slide, it's a bit busy. So um, the darker green, or I would say, I don't know what color is this. I would say it's green. That would be total Philippines and the blue would be SECD. The top three activities that, that SECD do in, in, uh, online are number one, messaging, number two, browsing. And when you talk about browsing, it's not like searching on a website or going to a website. It's actually um, scrolling through an app. So number one, messaging, number two, browsing, and number three, it significantly drops already. It's um, watching videos. So what you'll notice is that they, I mean, they are not necessarily not engaged, even if in, they, are, they belong to the SEC, the economic um, uh, uh, segment. And then here is one of the most interesting piece of data that we found out from this study. So we spoke about uh, messaging, browsing, and watching videos as the top three activities that they do. We now compared between people from the urban area and people uh, in the rural area. What we found out is that in the rural area, there were even more people who were using messaging. So imagine that. You'd think that the use of the platform is only exclusive to those who are in the urban area or who are in the upper strata of the of SEC. But in reality, people who are in the lower segments of the SEC as well as in the rural area are actually using messaging quite um, pervasively. And when we spoke to them anecdotally and why this was happening, um, in one of the uh, families, uh, uh, actually lady that we interviewed, we found out that that's actually how she communicates with her families and friends and even her, you know, relatives overseas. And for those who don't know, the reason why this has become so pervasive, and I'm specifically talking about Messenger, is that Messenger is actually free on any Android device. Even if you don't have data, you can actually use Messenger to communicate with anyone who's also in Messenger. So alluding now to Messenger, we look at um, what are the top apps that are being used by the urban uh, uh, people from the urban area and people from the rural area. So dark blue is urban, lighter blue is rural. You'll see here, uh, again, Messenger being at the top two and even uh, Messenger being more pervasively used in the rural area compared to the urban area. So that's actually a, a sort of snapshot that if you were a marketeer and you wanted to reach people and you wanted to talk about your product or your service or your idea, then if you're not yet on digital, you are missing on a big chunk of audience that can potentially be your customers. And this is just using digital. We're not even talking about TV or radio or print. We're just talking about on digital, you now have the ability to reach this group of people. So we also call the digital platform as you know, the technology that levels the playing field. Prior to this, um, these platforms, what happened was only the bigger companies you know, would be able to do this. Why? Because the only way you could reach uh, the rural areas, the urban areas, uh, 90 million people was through TV. And TV is super expensive, right? So, but because we now have this technology, it has leveled the playing field that even the smallest of businesses can now reach the audiences that they need to in order to drive um, sort of consideration and, or even purchase for their products and their ideas. So I'll pause a bit there and ask if we have any questions before I move into something more tactical. No questions? Okay. So I saw this question earlier. Thank you, Mark. I saw this question earlier. Um, how can we drive more likes and more shares for our page, page, Facebook profile? Now, 
my answer to this to that question was a bit intriguing, which wasn't actually quite direct. Because my answer was, why do you want people to, you know, follow your page or get more engagement for your page? So um, to take a step back in terms of the history of Facebook, um, because we were a social network, what happened was brands, advertisers, companies, their sole objective, because it was social, was to drive more followers, get more likes, uh, get more shares, and drive engagement, which was, which was obviously something that you can do on the platform. Now, I, before joining Facebook, I actually was with an advertising agency. And when we were doing this, we were like, you know, like exceeding expectations, you know, um, blowing our numbers. We were driving engagement. Then something happened. Something happened. A lot of our clients began asking, hey, Chai, I have like, like a million followers already on my page. And you know what? I'm very happy that the engagement right now is very high. But then they ask another question. They ask me, what is the impact on sales? Did people actually buy my product? So that's number one. Number two, did that, did that actually make them more aware about my product? Or did I gain market share by doing that? And you know what? During that time, we couldn't answer the question. So it was difficult because we were exceeding all of these metrics, but we weren't driving any or meeting any of the marketing and business objectives. So in Facebook, what we did is we made a shift. We said that there might be a better way to measure whether you have a, a successful campaign on Facebook or not. And that's trying to think that it doesn't matter if you have like 10 people following your page. What if um, 10 people have purchased 100 items of your product? Wouldn't that be more successful than a million followers and just buying like five pieces, right? So we wanted to be more pointed in terms of um, thinking about what we want to do. So this is, if there's anything that you can please remember uh, on, on this uh, particular presentation that I'm doing. When you do something on Facebook, be very deliberate on what you want to achieve. Um, if all you want to do is get more comments and more shares without knowing that why do you want to get more comments and shares and that is to sell more tickets, you know, to, to sell more products, sell of my cookies. No matter how many likes or shares that you have, if you're not meeting these objectives, then you would potentially be wasting your money. So it's, it's a, it's, I know it's unexpected, but that's something that you need to think about. So what has changed? So instead of um, thinking, how can I get more followers? Maybe an objective can be, how can I drive more awareness for my products or my service? Um, yes, Tama, Mary, I, I saw this Mary Julie Balabar. There should be a call to action, right? Um, if, you, if you just keep it at shares, but there's no call to action to do something, then you would probably be wasting your energy in that particular campaign. So some of the guiding principles, um, how can I use this platform to drive awareness and purchase intent? How can I make my customers be more loyal? Or how can I drive like, my sales for this particular product? Now, if you shift your, your mindset into thinking that way, instead of just thinking about engagement, then the platform becomes more powerful um, than how you are currently using it right now. Now, the next one is a bit um, tricky because it's a bit technical, but thankfully, you know, uh, uh, the platform is easy to use. If you go to facebook.com slash manager, you'll be able, this is where you'll be able to set up your um, campaigns. And what you'll notice is it already asks you what your objective should be. So when you set up a campaign in Facebook, you, it'll ask you, what do you want to do? Do you want to drive brand awareness? Do you want to drive conversion? Meaning, do you want to drive uh, people going to your site and actually buying something? Do you want to drive store traffic? Do you want people to actually go to your stores? And then Facebook will be able to guide you on how to set up these campaigns. Um, okay, pausing a bit. Um, do you think advertising is too expensive? What are the different methods of advertising? So um, 
Advertising, uh, whether it's expensive, is relative, right? So we have a metric that what we call um, ROAS. It's called return on asset investment. Now, what does that mean? Um, when we do a campaign in Facebook, especially if there's a purchase um, involved, what we do is we measure what the return on asset investment. And the formula for that is uh, amount of purchase divided by the money that you spend. So for example, I spent 10,000 on, uh, on my ad, but my purchase value became 100,000. So my ROAS was 10X. Now, is that advertising expensive or not? Then you can now do what we call performance marketing. You measure, is 10X enough for me or I, I need to drive it 12X or 2X is already enough for me to get a return on my profit. So that's now how we measure um, uh, 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 whether an advertising piece of advertising is, is expensive or not. However, I do have this um, anecdote. Um, it was once asked of me, what's the most expensive advertising um, that you could think of? And then one of the audience answered, you know, it's an ad that no one remembers. That's an expensive ad advertisement because you, you know, spend a lot of money, you put into production, you put into creative and no one remembered your brand then that definitely is expensive. There you go. Um, next, so, so now knowing that you, know, you have to be very mindful about your objective, there was a lot of questions as well on what type of ad gets the attention on our platform, okay? So, so what I'm gonna go through in the next probably five to 10 minutes, and after that we could sort of like maybe open up uh, I don't know, uh, Grace, if you have a, a short q &A. But I also wanted to quickly share what ads work on our platform and what doesn't work. Now, before I go into that, we have to look into the behavior or the, the, the research behind what, what gets your attention and, and what doesn't get your attention. So one piece of um, data that we got from neuroscience, did you know that between two screens, a bigger screen, and a smaller screen like your phone. For the same piece of content, it'll take your brain 2.5 seconds to digest the content on a bigger screen than a smaller screen like a phone. And it'll only take your, your brain about 1.7 seconds to understand that piece of content. Why is that? Um, one of the reasons is that um, even if you have a big screen like a TV or a laptop, it's, it's out there. I mean, it's something that you interact with and then you see something. But your phone is so personal, right? It's super personal that when, when you're looking at your phone, it has your full attention. Therefore, anything there, you can easily digest. Have you ever experienced talking to someone when they're on their phone? It's as if they can't hear you. It's because they're super zoomed in to what they are doing on their phone. And that's the reason why it's easier to also digest that um, the, the information that we have are uh, uh, on a smaller device. Now, um, Oh, yeah, sorry, that, that was. So we are creatures that are actually quickly evolving to becoming visual first. Well, what do I mean by that? Um, it used to be that you know, we needed words to understand each other. And we, we, we had to create words because that ha that's how we would communicate, right? Because we couldn't communicate before visually, pervasively. But now, I mean, you can do it. You're, you're, you're on your phone, you do a video call, um, you're on your video calls, you can see the person. So we're now becoming visual creatures. In fact, we actually only need 13 microseconds to identify an image. That's faster than speech, right? If I'm gonna give you an example, I don't know if it's gonna go slow or fast. I'm gonna quickly move into another, um, did you, did you see that? Did you see that image? Did you notice that image? Let me quickly look at the checkbox. Did you see the image? What did you see? See? Hi, Yelly Mae from Negros. Shoes, you already saw a shoe, a pair of shoe. That's from, ano lang ha? It's at 13 microseconds. Red shoes, all right. And what else? Rubber shoes. Nike, imagine that. Yes, and a man holding a shoe. That's correct. So imagine that, 13 microseconds, hardly a heartbeat. You were able to see that it was a shoe, that it was red, there was a man there, and guess what? 
people still identified the brand, which was Nike. So if you think about how powerful the visual is, you have to think about your ad or your creative to be as powerful. Now, what's the behavior of um, users in our platform in terms of consuming this visual cues? Okay, so if this was your phone, our users will first go to the image. Okay, that's the first thing that they look at. If they like the image, that's the only time where they will read the copy. If they are curious about the copy, that's the only time they will look at the brand. So if your visual cue is not interesting, swipe away. They would have gone away and not paid attention to what they were looking at. And there goes your brand. They won't even read your message or they won't even look at the brand. So it's super important to make your visual captivating and powerful. We have um, a moniker inside Facebook. This is what, we, we, what we call is thumb stopping. Will your image be powerful enough so much so that if someone is scrolling on their feed, they will stop and look at it. So that's one of the criteria when you are crafting your, your ads or creating uh, your asset. Now, here's the problem. And I don't know if Bench is already here. I've been talking to them, um, uh, uh, Professor Bench. The problem with that is how we are trained and how we are disciplined when we are asked to do an ad or a video is like this. Usually if the brief was, I want a video, it will be 30 seconds long and the message will be at the tail end. The problem is you only have three seconds to capture the attention of the user. If your main message is still at the end, then you've already lost that particular user. So the new way of doing a video or any creative in, in, in our platform at least is to move your messaging at the start. The first three seconds, remember that the first three seconds are the most compelling. You have two ways to use that three seconds. One is you already assume that the person will survive away, therefore your main message should already be there. That's number one. Or two, if you really insist on doing a longer video, the first three seconds should be super compelling that it will, it will make them stay and watch the whole video. So those are the two ways that you could make use of that three seconds. Now, what are the some of the best practices in doing this? Number one, the, it, your, your, your ad needs to capture attention quite quickly. Um, if it's a blank page or it has, uh, it's full of text, then you already lost your audience. It, your first frames should capture attention quickly. Number two, it should work on sound off. When I say sound off, most of our users are just like you. If you were on video right now, if, if you were on mute, your phone would probably be on sound off. And if it's on sound off, your ad should still be powerful, even if there's no sound. Now, how can you make it work with, with, when it's sound off? Number three, framing. Um, we are still used to using, uh, 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 doing videos um, that is on horizontal, right? So I'm going to give you an example. I'm going to open my Facebook here or feel free to open your own Facebook so, uh, uh, or, or Instagram for that matter. If you scroll through your Facebook right now and you see this one, right? It's a horizontal video. If you look at the, the size of your screen, it's actually, there's still a lot of space on the top and at the bottom. So why not fill up that screen with a larger format creative or a larger format ad. So we're going to talk more about and show you some samples about framing later. And of course, play more. There's so many things that you could do right now on our platform. You could use um, augmented reality. You could use AR. You could use filters. You could use posts. You could use, um, uh, you know, the swipes and the carousel. So be able to, um, you know, uh, remove the boundaries in terms of the limitations on doing just a video. So how should I better, just to further illustrate what I mean by that. So this first example, if you could see it on your screen on the leftmost, is by Kettle Cook. So when they sent this to us, it was just a static photo. It's really nice, you know, it shows the brand, there's Lace and there's Kettle Cook, so you know it's about Lace, but is it thumb stopping? So what did we do to make this more captivating and to, make, to capture the audience earlier? 
So we put a bit of motion, it's a layered file, and this is how it looked like. Think that's better? I think it's better. So versus one that's not moving and this one that's moving, I would probably, this would probably get my attention more. So consider putting in even some simple motions into your static ads or static assets. Um, yeah. The, the next um, uh, best practice is, I spoke about the first three seconds be being super important, right? And if you don't incorporate branding early, sorry. That's actually where you lose your audience. So in this case, what Eminem did is, in the first three seconds, Eminem was there. So even if you swipe away, I know that that um, ad is about Eminem's, right? And the last one is, is there an opportunity to put your brand front and center? So in this case, they, it, it's one of the most boring brief. If you were in advertising, you're usually given a brief and you're asked by your client to do something. And the brief for this is, we're changing the label for our bottle. How can you make that exciting? So what Jameson did is, you know, they showed how the label was changing and then you just had someone talking behind it. So again, more compelling, just, just presenting the bottle of product with a new label. So that's something that you could already do right now. Other recommendations. I talked about how can you do it using sound off. So, so initially when, when we were talking to creative agencies about this or clients about this, you know, make your videos work for sound off. And you know what they'll do? Their video, they're going to put subtitles. And imagine you, you already have a horizontal video and super small subtitles. You can, if you can't read it on your phone, then your customers can't read it on their phones. So what we're seeing happen right now is a more elegant way of putting in the, the captions. And one of the examples is this one. This is actually a video. You probably see more of this now um, on the platform. The way they... They, they did the, the captions is using topography. So you could see that the, the words flow, you know, seamlessly with the video. It's no longer just a static subtitle that, that's unreadable. It flows with the video. Another way of um, illustrating how we can uh, make use of sound off, the next one is a, a, an ad by VIX. So the ad is, uh, I think it works in five seconds. How do you illustrate that without having any words, right? Making it use a work for sound off. And this is how they did it. It's very visual, very simple. It works in, in five minutes. And the last one was super interesting because it actually came from a long form commercial. I think it was for, a, I don't know, one minute commercial. And we were thinking, how can we make this work on Facebook if it's a um, one, you know, like a, a minute. I mean, 30 seconds nga is long na a minute pa. So what we tried to do is incorporated captions, but in a more fun way, and it's telling a story. So I'll pause a bit so that we could see this. Can you see it? Sorry for those in Zoom. Can you see the ad? There. Yeah, fun, Deba. Right? So it's giving the message, you know, that Listerine makes you bolder. And this is without sound. You can't hear anything, and yet it still works. So that's something that you can potentially do in the next ads that you, that, that, that you make. So I'm hoping from this group. Now, the next one is I, I spoke about framing, right? So um, we spoke about how there's the phone. And the traditional size of videos are 16 by 9. Now, the, the challenge with that is while 16 by 9 is okay, there's a lot of space that you could use on, the on top of the video or at the bottom of the video. Now, for those, again, who are in my genre, you know, when we used to do print, you know, it's actually it was quite expensive to, to buy a full-size ad um, and the inquirer. Um, and you could either buy para above the fold or below the fold. But then the size of the ad matters. But on our platform, it doesn't matter. You pay for the same. And yet, why scrimp yourself and limit yourself for that small piece of um, real estate? So what we recommend is if you do plan to have ads on Facebook, is to try and, you know, the, the standard one, if you only had to do one, make sure it's one by one. Because one by one works on Facebook. It works on Instagram. It works on Messenger. If you want to push it a bit, you want to create um, a vertical ad so that it can also work on stories, both on Facebook and on um, Instagram. Now, let me give you an example 
just one ad, just frame differently and see the effect. So this is the same ad as you could see. I the, definitely the vertical one will capture most of my attention. It's the same ad, right? And all you did was to change the framing. So with that, um, those are some quick tips and tricks in how to do more effective ads on our platform. If you want to learn more, so we do have, uh, um, so here's the course. It's called Facebook Blueprint. You can just go to facebook.com slash blueprint. And this is the same training that we take as employees and we have to pass this twice a year. So if you want to be as good as any of the employees, just take uh, the, the trainings here. Let me see if I could show you what the content is. Uh, there you go. I think I can do this. So if you go to facebook.com slash blueprint, what you're going to see are the different courses that you could take. Um, and then you can choose what, is, what will be most relevant to you and what you want to do in terms of your campaign or in terms of your ad. Do you want to bring your business online? Um, there are also some featured courses. And if you're really into it, if you get certified, you know, there's very few certified people, Facebook um, professionals in the Philippines. And, you know, I invite any one of you to take a stab at it. So that's Blueprint. And yeah, with that, I guess we have a say in Facebook that the journey is always just 1% finished. There's just so much to learn. And the more you learn, the more you you know that there's a lot of things that you still need to learn. So I'll pause here and turn it over back to Grace. I think we do have a bit of time for um, questions and answers before we go into the next session. Am I right, Grace? Yeah, thank you, Chai, for that one. Um, guys, um, have you already filled out your um, questions? I saw some questions here already, so I'll, I'll, I'll ask Chai about it. But also, let me encourage you to also, of course, like our Facebook, and at the same time, you follow us, and do share also a little advertisement. So let me go first on some of the questions here. Um, wait, um, there. Top of mind, uh, can you mention a local successful campaign for ad and for page engagement? That is coming from Ruth and Jelly Cruz. Yes, thanks Ruth for the question. So um, I work with several uh, large local clients in the Philippines. I, I, um, I'm thinking I'm not at liberty to say the exact brand, but what I could say is we, we, what we're seeing right now is a pivot for brands to be selling directly on online platforms, right? I, I'm think, I think you, you've been seeing this. So a lot of the companies I work with are now selling their products in Lazada. So you see Unilever there, you see PNG there, you see L'Oreal there. So one of the more successful campaigns that I saw is in during the sale, um, I don't know if you know about 6-6 six, six or 11-11 11 11 or 12-12. At one point, we even got as high as um, 31x in terms of ROA. So what does 31x mean? Like, it's like for every 10 pesos times 30, that's the sale that they got from their campaign. So um, it's really now gearing towards what we call performance marketing. It's no longer enough to just spend your money and then like cast a wide net. It's now becoming more important to measure whether your ads are driving results. So this is something that um, I would love you know, to be able to help LaSalle more in, in teaching you know, our, our students. I see you there, Bench, and I see your question as well. <laughs> okay. Um, the next one is, uh, um, Joseph mentioned, uh, do you think children or young people are easier to influence uh, through ads compared to adults? Uh, this is coming from the Slido. Yeah. Do you think ads influence the choices you make when you or your parents buy something like foods or gadgets, etc.? cetera? Um, you know what? I'm, I'm a marketeer. I'm an advertiser. And I, I would say, okay, maybe stepping back, I'm actually a victim of marketing. Why do I say that? Because there are things that I don't even intend to buy, but I see it on my feed. And then I go, I, I think I, I want that. For example, uh, there was this, um, I don't know if you see this in your, your feed. There was this jacket that 
you know, had a place for earphones that has a hood yeah. that could also, you know, cover your eyes oh. when you're sleeping and you have a necklace. My gosh, you know, I didn't even know I needed that, but I bought it, right? So um, it does help because if you're not top of mind, then the your target consumer won't have the ability to choose you. Now, let me step back a bit to the more powerful brands, right? Um, uh, for example, you know, Colgate or Close Up. Some people don't even know that the generic name is toothpaste, right? Because their brands are so powerful that they refer to toothpaste as Colgate or Close Up. Now, does that influence what you buy? I mean, definitely. If you only had three choices, Colgate and then brand XYZ, you would want to go with something that you're more familiar with. And then sometimes people pay a premium for that. So rather than buy some uh, a brand that they don't know, they will buy a brand that they're more familiar with. And why do they become familiar with that brand? That's because of marketing and that's because of advertising. Yeah? Okay. Uh, Mary Julie ba Balar Ball, uh, is there a plan to create a platform from front to end, like including possibly delivery and payment platform? Wow. Can I share? No, just kidding. <laughs> no, um, so thank you for that question. Super important, Mary, Julie. Um, so I'm also a member of the Internet Mobile and Marketing Association of the Philippines. And I had one of the committees called Digital Commerce. So one of the phenomenon that we're seeing right now is the adoption of digital commerce from, and this ranges from small big businesses to big businesses. Now, when you think of end-to-end, of digital commerce, you're actually thinking from fulfillment to having a storefront to actually having uh, performance marketing, right? Is there a platform that does that end to end? At the moment, I don't think there is, but certainly it's become easier now more than ever to do digital commerce. For example, a small business right now does, does, that, that does not have any fulfillment capability can just you know, work with Lala Move right? If you want to get something delivered. If you want to do advertising, before you have to have money for TV. Now you could just use Facebook, boost your post, and let people know within 20 kilometers of your house that you can deliver, right? And performance marketing, I was talking about ROAS. You can now measure whether, you know, the 10 pesos that you spend has given you 100 pesos worth of sales. And if not, then adjust it, you know? You fail fast, then you learn fast. So, so is, it, is there something that right now that's end-to-end? -end? I don't think so. But if you were to ask me if I wanted to get started with digital commerce, you know, there's Lala Move, there's Amcas, there's Grab. For a storefront, you, there's um, Shopify, there's Facebook Shop. And then for performance marketing, of course, you, you can use Facebook. So just yeah. to add to what Chai was mentioning, nowadays, uh, given the life cycle that she mentioned from end-to-end, there are multiple platforms wherein those platforms can actually integrate with each other. So it's something like uh, eventually discovering which one would match what. And, and the, the connection between them, um, mas madalit na now. Kasi they, sila mismo nag offer um, Going back, uh, there is a question here from Baita Obshoma, uh, which government agency regulates advertising? So um, from what I understand, it's not it's not direct, it's self-regulated. So we have what we call the ASC, the ads. Oh gosh, help me here, Bench. Um, ASC, sorry. It's, a, it's an organization where um, in order to do ads, you have to be a member of the organization. And then they, they have um, policies on what ads will, um, uh, are allowed and not. And if you do an ad that's not allowed, for example, you claim to be the number one, but you cannot substantiate it then you will be fine and your ads can be taken down so so yeah there is it's not a government error government agency, um it is a, uh, Mr. Uh, said it's advertising standard council there you go <laughs> thank you bench so yeah it's the advertising standards council and it's been already uh, there for 30 years so i'm actually a believer of self-regulation so that's probably something that i would propose you know even for digital commerce Okay. Another one is, uh, what are the implications of imposing tax on digital content and services? Um, I, so this is not a Facebook opinion. This is my opinion, right? So, uh, so, 
So we are one of the countries that are like the most lagging in terms of digital commerce, right? Um, and we are lagging even without all of these barriers. Now, it's just my feeling right now that if we put more um, barriers for businesses to, to, to sort of um, embrace digital commerce, then we will be even farther behind. So there might be a good time when to do this. It's just that now I think it will hurt the e-commerce industry as well as the small businesses. Because guess what? Do you know who's benefiting right now most? from um, going online and digital commerce. It's not actually the big companies. It's actually the small businesses. This is the only way that they can stop the bleeding from their businesses. That's number one. The only way that they could sustain the business if they are still alive and the possible way that they can grow their business. So to put barriers on them right now, I think it, it will stifle uh, trade rather than sort of a foster um, commerce. Okay. Um, guys, any more questions coming uh, from FB? Um, also coming from Zoom, would you like uh, to ask some more? There are some questions that was asked earlier, but Ms. Chai already uh, answered this a while ago during her discussion, so I, I would not anymore repeat that. So guys, this is the opportunity now. Uh, I hope you can uh, send in your questions so um, we can benefit from, and, uh, from Chai on, with regards to this one. Uh, I just want to say hi to Clara Valde Guzman. <laughs> also, hi to Charito from Leyte. Hi, good afternoon. Guys, we're happy to see you here. Um, Chai, you know, um, everybody's represented. There are people coming from the north, the south, and um, different provinces. As far as, like, I think Ifugao, I, I saw someone from Ifugao. So, we're very happy that you guys are participating. Um, here, uh, from Alvin. Oh, wait. She mentioned other smaller screens are now, uh, okay. From Sir Alvin, uh, she mentioned earlier that smaller screens are now big thing. So does this mean that when billboards will soon be replaced? Um, so I, I guess different media channels play different roles, right? Um, and it, it used to be that billboard, um, and for those advertising professionals who are in the room, feel free to chime in and put, to put in your comments. But um, the power of billboard is frequency, right? If you're passing by the billboard every single day or twice a day, um, then you, you, you'll be able to remember the, the brand that's on the billboard if, if that's what you want to, that, that's what your intention. Now, the problem with billboard is reach, right? Because uh, the reach of the billboard is only those who are passing by near the billboard. So if you had... Uh, a product that was available nationwide and your only ad was a billboard in Guadalupe, then people from Cebu won't be aware of your, of your brand, right? So, so I think that's one of the things that, that we need to take into consideration. And one of the things I'm particularly proud of our platform because um, in a way, frequency, you can adjust the frequency whether you want your ads to be seen you know, twice a week or three times a week. Plus, you have the ability to target multiple geographies. I mean, if you want a donation of my campaign, you can have that. If you want something that's focused on Metro Manila, you can do that as well. So I wouldn't say billboards are obsolete. I would say it might have a role, but that will depend on the objectives of the brand. Yeah? Sorry, there's so, some more. But uh, before that, uh, I'd like to shout out and say hi to Lynn Ola. She's my colleague from Deutsche Bank. Uh, wait. Um, here, um, how did FB react to fake accounts? Uh, some, I know. Well, it's not part of our, our coverage, but uh, I guess um, we understand the we understand the concern of the people who are on the platform. If there's one thing that we've discovered, um, this wasn't something that was just done. Uh, these were really old accounts, um, and. Um, because there was just so much attention during the weekend that people found out uh, that there were these duplicate accounts. But it wasn't something that happened overnight. So this was born out of like for however Facebook was there already. So I'd actually like to request for our conversation to be focused on digital marketing rather than this. Yeah. 
Um, for the sake na lang of the one who asked the question, coming from a cybersecurity company, I used to work before with cybersecurity, so it's not on the Facebook, but you have to understand uh, the data theft that happened. These are multiple sites, and it's not only uh, for the LaSalle, it goes for other sites, and it also goes for other countries. It is a syndicated thing that might have happened, and uh, the next thing there is after getting your um, data, they now uh, put something in Facebook. So it's actually like if it's a malware, then it's a combination of multiple things. It's, it, we can discuss that on a different discussion, not on this point, but at least that gives you a little idea on how it is. Okay, next is, it's less more. It's less more. What, what, what do we, are we referring to ads then? It's less more? Yeah. Here's ever Ever as Mark, uh, that's his name, um, he, he is asking is less more. Okay, so here's an interesting um, uh, phenomenon that we oh. noticed. So, so it used to be in Facebook, when Facebook was just starting, that people would po have, you know, I have to have one post a day, like for 30 days, every month. So that will be 30 posts a day so that I can get more uh, sort of like, um, I capture more of the audience. And if I don't post today, then I will lose my audience. And you spend a lot of time. I've worked with companies, what they'll do is they're gonna hire an agency, produce this 30 pieces of content, and they have to approve it a month before, and there's back and forth. By the time that you know that they approve the content, it's already you know not relevant anymore. So there's that way of doing it. However, there's a way of doing a, a campaign in Facebook right now that you can only have three ads three ads and you can set it up in such a way that I want that three ads to run for four weeks on my platform, on, on my campaign, and that for five million people to see it twice a week. So it doesn't necessarily need more ads, but you need to be very deliberate on how long you want your ads to be there and how many times you want your users to see it. So is less more if I refer to creatives versus you know 30, Three versus thirty. I mean, yeah, it can be more powerful depending on how you use it. Okay, uh, Chai, we're running out of time. Um, so, um, what I'll do is try to just capture the other questions, and then we'll probably just have some answers offline. And then um, I also saw that there, uh, there, there's somebody watching from Rome, Italy. Wow, <laughs> oh, very exciting. Anyway. Um, Wait, there's... there. <laughs> so, okay, so um, guys, I would like to close this part of the session and we'll just go to the next one and there would be more exciting discussion together with the other speakers uh, as we line up. Chai, thank you for this one. Um, let, let me just pull out the other slides so at least I can explain to them what's going to happen next. Okay, at this point, um, first, let me just uh, seek your apology because our second speaker, Mr. Joel, uh, Dela, uh, Joel H. Garcia from Amazon had some emergency uh, for this afternoon and he won't be able to make it. But at any rate, we have prepared something exciting for everybody. So we would be discussing change, culture, and innovation. And we would be joined um, by... Um, again, Ms. Chai Mandeharsa Putil from Facebook, um, Professor Alvin Neil Gutierrez, a faculty uh, from DLSU under Management and Organization College of Business, um, Professor Bienvenido Lorenzo Casaneda and Carnacion, he's a marketing and con communications consultant and also a faculty from the DLSU Marketing and Advertising. Um, I'll also join you. I'm from Through Life UK, and at the same time, I'm a business consultant. So let me just introduce our panel for this afternoon. Um, Sir Alvin Neil Gutierrez uh, earned his Master's of Human Resource Management in Industrial Relations from the University of Sydney uh, Business School in 2011 as an Australian Award Scholar. He was a bachelor's degree in political science from DLSU and a recipient of Moses Standing Thesis and student leadership. Before joining the teaching professor, uh, profession, he had an extensive human resource management organization development, sales and marketing experience from various industries such as BPO, direct selling consultancy, telecommunications, superannuation, health and wellness, retail and food. 
As a consultant, he has served various local and global companies in the field of team building, cross-functional communication, leadership and entrepreneurship, organizational development, and work and personal values. His field of interest are the human resource practices and the various facets of sales and sales processes, product development, management strategy, call center operations, talent management, organizational development. He is currently assisting undergraduate curriculum committee for the Applied Corporate Management Program. He had presented in various research papers in local and international conferences, particularly in the US and Japan, currently on his doctoral dissertation along the lines of the fourth industrial revolution, organizational culture and pandemic response. So let us wel welcome uh, Sir Alvin Gutierrez as part of our panel. Um, the next panelist would be um, Dr. Um, Professor Bienvenido Lorenzo Castaneda Encarnacion. Uh, he's a marketing uh, and communication consultant. And at the same time, he did work for BCD Pinpoint uh, as associate head in marketing communications in research um, around in 2010 to 2011. Um, he is also part of Den Densu Indio or Densu Asian Network uh, as associate head for knowledge management before. Um, he did also, uh, uh, he was also a service design marketing communications around in 2006 and was also part of Nestle Philippines Incorporated as AVP for Marketing Intelligence. Um, Mr. Ed Kanashon has a very deep um, experience in the said line and we would like to welcome him also as part of the panel. Um, on my end, I'm Mary Grace D. Um, I'm, as I did mention, I'm from True Life UK, but from background, I used to work with also ID companies like Trend Micro, uh, Deutsche Bank. Um, I do handle change management so um, with all its facets. Uh, so from IT going to culture change, uh, innovations and so on. We, uh, we are also an awardee of the Global Innovation Awards of Trend Micro. So without further ado, um, let us welcome all our panelists uh, so we can discuss now on change, innovation and uh, culture. Uh, and the first part, let me call uh, Ms. Chai so to share with us also uh, the culture and innovation for Facebook. Chai. I'm back. <laughs> let so me I'm stop my chair. Okay, there. Yeah, so let me share my screen. Uh, uh, it, this is just going to be a quick one so that we could have some prompts for our... Um, um, we would like to encourage our um, participants to please participate. This is actually a, a session wherein we would like you to engage with us. This is not something like we would be presenting, but it's more of a discussion. So it, it's just like a conversation between each and every one of us. So please do participate. Um, we would also encourage if you'd like to open up your, your uh, video now. And also, if you want to talk and participate, you can probably open and unmute yourself. And But please, Identify yourself before talking. Yeah, so, so yeah, don't worry, guys. It won't be as long. This is more of a conversation starter for my esteemed colleagues and panel members here. So, Alvin. So, Alvin, how should I call you? Alvin Neil or Alvin or Neil? Well, my LaSalle name is also Isvini. So, it's an incorporation of Alvin and Neil. So, the last syllable, Vin, and the Neil put them together, and I'm called Vinny. So wow, nice. Vinil, parang ano, LP. <laughs> yeah. Anyone know what LP si Bench alam yan? Ano yung LP? <laughs> okay, anyway. Uh, so, uh, long playing. That's what you call for the kids out there. LP is a long playing album, also a vinyl. Anyway, uh, what I'm going to show you in the next probably five or ten minutes now is a conversation starter. So, as what Grace has said, this is a panel discussion. And this is where we can really have some, like, you know, really, really good um, back and forth, and especially that we have a good audience here. So um, I'm just going to give you a quick preview on what our culture is um, inside, inside Facebook. And maybe um, some would, you probably agree, some you won't agree, but it was a good conversation starter. So I, I, I left off my last presentation where I said that the journey is 1% finished. So if you go to any Facebook company, you, you'd see this poster. What that really means is no matter how many things we do, 
it will never be perfect. It will only just be 1% of what we do. So that's something. And because the, the reason why I wanted to share this with you is it's not only something that we talk about, but it is actually something that is apparent in even our environment. So if you go to our Facebook office, so we have one in the Philippines. Uh, we'd be happy to invite you, everyone here post-COVID. What you'll notice here is most, unlike other offices where they localize in each country that they go to, if you go to our Facebook office, it will probably look the same. And what it will look like is unfinished. So when we say the journey is 1% finished, we also want our environment to reflect that, that it's not finished. So you could see the ceiling, you know, the floors are, are like, you know, a lot of it are uncarpeted because we want everyone to remember that this is something that we value. Now, um, you've probably seen this before, Culture Eats Strategy for Breakfast um, by Peter Drucker. And, and we really believe that this is something we're super mindful about in Facebook. So much so that we really wanted our culture to be anchored on our values. Now, that's not uncommon. Like every company that you probably spoke to would always have their own values. But there's, I was surprised about this. There's something unique about the values of Facebook. So, so our, our boss, you know, see, see Mark Zuckerberg said that, you know, values, I mean, if you go to a company and they say, our value is integrity or our value is excellence. The way he looks at it is you should have integrity to begin with. You, you, I mean, if you don't have integrity, then why are you here, right? Or if, if you don't like you aim for excellence, I mean, parang, then you're a mediocre person. So that's not necessarily something that we should, dispel, we should spell out. So in his mind, the value should be something that would help us decide when things become hard or things are gray, that this, these are the values that we want to get back to. So in Facebook, they, these are actually our values. The one you see on the top, one, two, three, four, five. So number one is build social value. Number two is move fast. Number three is be bold. Number four is be open. Number five, focus on impact. Now, just a quick one. What do, what do we mean by building social value? It means that with whatever work that we're doing, it should have a good purpose. It should be anchored in our mission and on, on giving the people the power to build community and bringing the world closer together. In this example, I don't know if you're aware that um, we now have a, a feature so that blind people or people with um, uh, uh, um, uh, disability, uh, the, the photo will be described to them. So that feature came about because our value is one of, you know, build, build social value. We have to incorporate something that would give value to the people who are using our platform. Number two is move fast. So uh, I don't know if you've heard about the, the quote coming from Churchill. Um, uh, a good plan violently executed now is better than a perfect plan next week. So as, uh, as part of our value, we bias towards some, getting something done now rather than analysis paralysis, you know, planning, making sure that the, 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 the plans are perfect, but you do it six months down the line and it's no longer relevant. So we rather do an imperfect plan right now or at least a good plan right now. And if we're going to make mistakes, you know, we'll fix that. And we learn from that. We don't see mistakes as bad. You know, we, we look at it as either we win or we learn. And, and that's something that we... Uh, literally embrace. So you'd think that these are just lip service, but we literally embrace this. Um, so you'd see a lot of Facebook folks when you talk to them, it's like, okay, what can we do now? Can we shorten this meeting from 45 minutes to 40, uh, 40 minutes so we can get, give uh, some time back to the, the ones who are attending? Be bold. What would you do if you weren't afraid? Um, as I mentioned before, this is anchored on pushing the limitations because only by by doing something uncomfortable, we, are we able to discover something new or something beneficial? Now, there are times when it doesn't work, and that's fine. And, uh, that, but because we are anchored at pushing the boundaries, this is where we see where we're getting the most benefit from. Um, being open. Uh, it's a very difficult time right now. I mean, for people uh, actually working for Facebook because... We are, we are 
we want to be a platform that does not um what do you call this we cannot be the what 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 word did i use anyway we cannot be the the one who determines the truth right so in a way we're neutral and because of that a lot of people would want to bias towards a certain piece of content but we have a value and we strongly believe it and everyone in facebook even the employees you know our values being open so uh Every week, we have a Q&A portion, very similar to this with, with Mark. And then everyone is free to ask him whatever. Like, like so in one Q&A, I even heard the question is, um, you know, what dog food do you give to Beast, which is his dog, right? And he would answer that. Or, um, you know, what, what's your favorite exercise? And then, you know, he said he tried biking and he broke his arm. And, you know, he's very candid about it. And it's, it's not... I, I was surprised because it, there's not a lot of companies we can actually directly ask your CEO and then, you know, have it, your questions answered. Um, and the last one is focus and impact. Um, so we have a, a saying that don't mistake movement for motion. Or sorry, don't mistake motion for movement. Meaning you, you see people who are very busy, but they're not completing anything. So that is not valued inside our, 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 our you know, culture. Um, we, we look at not the person who is the busiest, but the person who can actually deliver impact. Now, this is something that we're, we're measured on. You know, every performance review, they look at this and then they'll see, are we uh, aligned to uh, the values that was, that was actually, um, you know, uh, brought forward and we, that, that, that we embrace. Now, how does this translate to our work practices? Um, really trying to build a different company as employees being open so how do we sort of bring to life being open diversity inclu and inclusion super important to facebook um we everyone is required to to um sort of understand how to manage biases um uh, i don't know if you've heard recently uh the head of our diversity and inclusion team now sits on every meeting that that mark has and cheryl sandberg has so because why, why is this important? Why is authenticity and diversity important? Imagine if you were doing an ad for, uh, pardon my, uh, for, for, for sanitary napkins, right? But you all had men in that room. Who would have the ability to really know and understand what would be the needs, right? So what, what we see is when we are diverse and when we are inclusive, that's where the best ideas come alive. Um, this one, prior to joining Facebook, I really thought this was just, you know, um, a myth. You know, when we say we're strength-based. So uh, the way we're evaluated or even the way our career works in Facebook is um, we don't look at the weaknesses of the employees. Because most of the time, diba, or even in school, you're bad at math, then we're, you have to spend five more hours on math versus one hour. But we look at what, are you good at? And when we talk about strength, it's not necessarily what you're good at because you can be good at something but hate it. Like, you know, I, I call myself a closet introvert. I mean, like, no one would believe me. I prefer to be reading and just on the corner. But, but I've learned to, you know, um, present. I've learned how to, to do seminars. I've learned how to do workshops. Um, so there's something that you can be good at but they don't necessarily find energy. So, so we make a deliberate effort for each employee to understand what our strengths are and align the work that we're doing to our strengths. And then in terms of learning and innovation, I think the more important thing is we do this by using feedback. So um, we, it wasn't something I was used to before. I'm a non-confrontational person, but fast feedback is super important. And why is that important? So, so we, we attend workshops on crucial conversations and fast feedback. The, the hypothesis or the theory behind why that's important. If you have a problem and it takes you two weeks to give feedback about the problem, then, they, then you already lost two weeks of time where you could have solved the problem. So the faster you give it, the, the more opportunity you have to fix it. And so with that, there are just some thought starters. Um, uh, the reason why we sort of wanted to share this is, of course, not every company is doing this, but there are some opportunities for other companies who might find this beneficial. Now, I think I'll turn you over now to Grace to sort of 
moderate this panel on how we can get started in talking about innovation and culture and how can changes happen. Yeah. Sorry, questions. Yeah, it's a question. I think, uh, Grace, there's a question in our chat box. Can you hear, can you, uh, yeah, your, your Grace, your microphone is on mute. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, I'm okay. actually trying to scroll on the questions here. Um, as one of the one-time brand manager of Whisper had all the salesmen wear sanitary pads now <laughs> know what wings is about but this is a, a comment uh, that's interesting i mean seriously if you don't um, understand your audience but wouldn't it be better if they just ask the women <laughs> my two cents worth <laughs> from van uh jafet and sia uh i just wonder how does your company measure impact so we still do performance reviews we have that like twice a year but how how it happens is every week we have a one-on-one -on -one session with our with our managers and then we have in our i would say the tool um regular feedback is given so that um uh we don't just have a conversation twice a year so that's one number two is it's really on on impact um so the question would be what at the start of the year we have to identify what we want to achieve and did we achieve that so uh, it's not, and, and, I, and, and the thing is, um, some people would say, hey, I didn't achieve that, but I worked this much, right? Um, yes, that will be considered, but unless you have a good case on why it didn't happen, it's still about the results that you're driving. So it's very results driven. That's why it wasn't so hard for us to do work from home, for example. Why? Because it doesn't matter how many hours we log in, we could be working just one hour a day but are we still able to achieve that result? So that's one. And then there's also, so the way we, we do it, you know, we have a rating, you meet expectations, and some, of course, exceeds that, is above and beyond the results that were expected from you that year. What else did you do? So that's also something that we consider. Now, one other, I think, interesting, I don't know if, uh, if, if you've seen this before, is promotions, for example. Our promotions is actually lagging. We're not promoted because um, we have the potential to do the job. We are promoted because we're already doing the job now and we're capable. So for example, uh, you know, we, we have levels, level one, two, three, four, five. If I'm a level three right now, but what the way I'm performing is I'm doing the job of a level four, then I have the potential to be promoted. So it's a lagging, lagging um, uh, uh, a session. And, and the other one is um, super interesting is that um, you can choose or not choose to become a manager. So managers and individual contributors are paid the same in our organization. Why are we doing that? that that's our, uh, it's a way to make sure that those who are managers really want to be managers because in a very traditional hierarchy, the only way to get promoted is to become a manager, even if you don't want to manage people, right? So there are some people who are forced to become managers and then eventually that causes a lot of pain for the organization because you put someone who's incapable of managing people, but you sort of like, uh, you know, like force them because that's the only way to get a higher pay or that's the only way to get promoted. So that's one other, I think, um, unique thing that we have right now in the company. Okay. Um, there are other questions, but uh, I'll just stop from here. And then uh, I'll ask our other panelists to to discuss and add some more para mas ma ano pa yung ating discussion. So mm -hmm. who'd like to go next? Um, Sir Sir Bick or Alvin? Uh, I guess I could uh, share some no, because I was taking down notes earlier on Chai's topic, and something struck me, uh, particularly on. You mentioned because the the values of the organization. Because I was when I when I was listening to your presentation, pang nakikita ko that the values or yeah the values of Facebook is so into a certain generation or a certain uh, cohort. But does this defy the the openness of the of the culture? Uh, if you get what I mean, 
parang kasi nangyayari is the the culture of of the values of Facebook if you can recap me no yung build um, sustainable value move fast be open focus on impact so parang these are basically um trade a certain certain cohort no so, um, yeah it it defies now the being openness but if for example being open um like my auntie would like would like to work on facebook and she's mm. you know 55 something and then she, because we would like to accommodate the openness pero she failed on certain aspects of the culture or of the values. So, parang hindi ba siya nag-clash? Nag-clash. I, I actually, thank you for that question, Alvin. I think, um, uh, in fact, what happened was the opposite. Mm-hmm. What happened was, um, uh, it didn't matter, you know, what your age was or mm-hmm. what your, uh, you know, religious belief is. For as long as you foster these values, you can actually be a part of Facebook. In fact, um, you know how open we are. I mean, we have groups inside Facebook, just like you know Facebook that you see right now. We have an internal Facebook. We call it Workplace. There's a group there that's called Over 30 at Facebook, Over 40 at Facebook, mm-hmm. Over 50 at Facebook, and it's a funny discussion, you know. Parang you would have people who are over 50 but are still individual contributors. Mm, uh, but you would have people who are just in their 30s that are like, you know, I mean, Mark Zuckerberg's just 33, right? So, I mean, like, the, these are like the top line execs. So, so what happened was it sort of leveled the playing field that without looking at age or beliefs or race, um, for as long as you foster these values, then you, you feel that you belong, right? Mm-hmm. So, so I think that's one thing that, I, I felt it was unique. Um, I, I don't think I've seen, like I've worked with four other companies before. I mean, um, but it wasn't as apparent, I'd say. I would actually, I'm curious, like like in your company, buying what's the values that you have right now? And is it something that's embraced? The same, I guess I have the same question for Bench. Mm-hmm. Well, I would like to answer first. Um, well, right now, uh, the values of my company is, of course, really humorous and culture. <laughs> no, but prior oh, to my teaching the academy, <laughs> prior to teaching the academy, um, I've been a an o- OD or organizational culture consultant, and the top management is really obsessed. Bisan napansin nila na parang why are my employees lethargic? Why are my employees like unproductive? So is it something that the, the culture that we have to change the culture? So. Um, in my former company, it took us three years to mm-hmm. really make sure that the uh, people are embracing the so-called culture. Mm-hmm. And uh, it was a weekly intervention. Sometimes we re- were running out of ideas and we did all sorts from training to mm-hmm. uh, you know, quality circles. Mm-hmm. And still, uh, um, the owner of the companies, the, the, the board, are asking us, is it something that the top management should embrace? Because sometimes if, it's the, if the top management are the ones who are not having that buy-in, they're just firing the, the, the C-suite uh, officers of the organization. So para oh, what a casualty, no? Just because they made a certain remark against the organization's culture, values. So... Uh, I'm, I've been to companies who've been so obsessed of making sure that the organization culture is really something that uh, is oiling them to reach their profitability, competitiveness, and growth. And they're really spending millions on organizational culture change. Now, my take on this is that given the new normal, Chai, just, just your opinion or point of view, um, will that culture of Facebook change now that we are facing you know, the so-called new normal? What are your thoughts on this? Um, actually, I, I would say rather than change, it's, it has to be stronger more than ever. Mm-hmm. I mean, with change, because it comes a certain need for an anchor. And, and especially with, with things are so ambiguous, things are so different, parang, there must be something that you could hold on to that would preserve what you want to do in the company and that's in our culture. So, so I don't, see this changing for now but just to to give you some sort of like um interesting when you share na you know in this company that you know why are people lethargic i mean we're, we're you're doing interventions and weekly i've um i i used to i love organizational development i i thought that was gonna be my my career after microsoft um 
But what I did notice in all of the companies that I work with, no matter what you put on paper, it's ano eh, it's the behavior of leadership. Seriously. I mean, like, uh, uh, badly put, it's monkey see, monkey do. I mean, if whatever you write on paper is not being sort of like uh, demonstrated by the leadership, people won't follow. For ex- I'll give you an example. Um, we, uh, we have a, a, a platform called Workplace. It's, uh, it's like Facebook, and internally, that's where we post what we think. You know, we do our Q&A, we do our live Q&A, we, we air our views. We, there was a company in the Philippines that wanted to use Workplace as well. And then, and then the CEO said, hey, um, in Workplace, ba, can I monitor who's reading the posts? And then can I delete all negative um, you know, comments? Then I go, you know, I don't think Workplace will work for you because it neutralizes the, the, the concept of being transparent. And if you really want to be transparent, you have to be open to the, those type of commentary. Now, unless that CEO demonstrates that, that she, she or he can handle, you know, even comments that are not positive, then people will refuse to say anything transparent, right? Because uh, there's that fear. So, but once, you know, the same company, once they've decided, hey, I'm going to have a Q&A, and you can ask me anything you want, even about my personal, what, whatever I'm doing, that's when people started to sort of relax. So it does take, I mean, it, it take, does have a lot of burden on leadership, but that's, I think without that, a culture transformation won't work. I actually want to go to Bench. Bench, you were going to mention something. Cool. Yeah. <clears throat> Thanks, Star. There were several things that you mentioned that were very interesting because previously, have you ever studied the analog version of a bulletin board? If you study the analog version of a bulletin board, and then sooner or later, you get the feedback from the employees themselves mm-hmm. if they actually read the bulletin board. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then you will find that any company that has a suggestion box mm-hmm. is top heavy. Mm-hmm. This is why I mentioned in, my, in the talk that the concept of a global company, the boss is not a person the boss is actually an agreed objective. And if everybody latches on to that objective, then we compound on what we call and we create the shared value, creating shared value. Because we, if we do create on the shared value, then I think to say everybody contributes. In the face of the consumer, your contribution is just so much. But the impact of that so much is so much more in depth for the consumer themselves. And then earlier, um, Alvin made mention of uh, what you call the the concept of probably, have you guys heard the concept of immortality? One time I was closing a conference last year, two years ago, And I told them, and it all had to do about millennial this, millennial that. And I said that, what if I told you there's no such thing as millennial or baby boomers or X, Y, Z, but there's such a thing as a word called immortality, which is living agelessly. So you can have the same verb and passion from the moment you actually realize this person existed up to today. This is Mark Zuckerberg. This is also Bill Gates. This is also the likes of Madonna. This is also the likes of, well, Michael Jackson at the time. And soon to come up, several other people, same pitch, same passion. And this is not an age. This is already an attitude. And this is what we are experiencing now. In fact, when we did the online learning, you would see that some people went through a lot of dabda, you know, denial, anger. anger, bargaining. And we saw that in some of our students and also in some of our professors. The ability to adapt to people has to be also with him. Except that maybe us, 
Mary, Chai, and Alvin, we're happy children. So That's just right. a happy child. We do, we go with the flow. Okay, yeah. we just go with the flow, right? So if you guys can actually do this, can do this. Okay, then I know you have <laughs> had a happy childhood. Okay, so look at the look at the whole process. Look at the whole process. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, if we're talking about culture and innovation, I'll just share with you a recent interview with my neighbor, and he's an engineer. And he was, this is the value of feedback. And he was actually on the ball already when COVID was near our door. Mid-February, and he, he handles more than 500 people. Wow. And they do power plants. They do power plants. Mm -hmm. So from, from February, what he did was he already had an emergency meeting and told the people, we will only go to work on Monday and Friday. That's more than 500 people. Right. And then on top of that, he also bought seeds. And he told all of them, except for 30, to go home to the province. Magtanim kayo. Because we don't know when this will happen. So again, some people were saying, what's the character of an innovator? The character of the innovator is somebody who senses these things. And sense, by the way, is not one person. It is everyone. Okay. That's the reason why I said, as long as we, we are clear on the objective yeah. and we have these shared values, we can progress. We actually yeah. can progress. So. In the village, I'll tell you, in the village, earlier on, before the lockdown, there was already a emergency meeting with the board. And they said, oh my goodness, we'll be locked down. So what did they do? They actually contacted the vendor of chicken, yeah. veggies, and of late seafood. And they said, every Wednesday at the clubhouse, we will have a market. And this was before the swarm in Balintawak and uh, Blumentritt, which was the precursor of the community market. Again, innovation. So you really have to take a look at some things. Uh, last case study, this is real. Part of it is uh, happened before the COVID. Uh, I've been, uh, well, some of you know I'm an outdoor person. And... Facebook knows I've been taking a look at Rudy, Rudy Projects. And one time I saw this, this ad, Rudy Project. Oh, by the way, for the people who don't know, these are uh, sports uh, shades. And uh, the title is Technically Cool Eyewear. So <laughs> they were there. Okay, so fine. And they said, and you get a discount, 30%. So I clicked on the on the link and it says, before we can give you the 30%, we'd like to see your Rudy project, take a picture and tell us a little something about the Rudy's. So I did and I told them that I've been at this sport, etc. And then came back and said, you earn the 30% discount and somebody will, uh, they will trade in your Rudy project for Wow. Uh, they're going to donate it to the the workers in the high rise. Oh, nice! For their shades, right? So I said, "Wow, that's pretty cool." So, and all I had to do was show the the message on the phone, okay, and then go to the Rudy Project store. When I got to the Rudy Project store, there was a a whole rack, fifty percent off. <laughs> so, the end. Again. You know, this is, you expose yourself mm. to this, uh, to this communication. And then going back, uh, I'm backtracking now on the issue of uh, culture and innovation. Everybody wants attention today, right? And in fact, um, I, I just liken this uh, to the X factor. So it's raining, you're in your vehicle, you're in front of school, and your eyes will go this way and that way, and it will hit on one person, X factor. 
two seconds, right? So, which is similar to what Chai made mention earlier about attention span. I only saw one ad in Guadalupe, one ad, only once, but the copy was so, it drew me in, it sucked me in. You know what the copy was to all those Archie fans? It is, are you a Veronica or a Betty? <laughs> And it was only once. So the issue of frequency is, the issue is the message. In other words, guys, girls, what's your pickup line? You got to have a pickup line. Okay, I'll keep quiet now. Okay. <laughs> Let me, me share a few. Um, since my background, um, for now, I'm, I'm with True Life. So just to share with you, um, the values they have, it's, you would see in taglines. We do. Yeah. Because uh, as you would see, uh, the success of the company is anchored always in listening and always understanding. So this is the reason why, uh, if you've heard about that the um, COVID coverage that it was released, it is together with an app that is an AI uh, apps already. So the, uh, things are actually changing based on the need of the audience. It's not only here in the Philippines, but it is actually done also elsewhere because the need is almost uh, similar to everybody so if you listen then your market then would be able to still adopt now things are non face to face with most of our businesses and if you you are not yet uh, accepting this change then your bus business would not thrive y you'd be left behind y you'd hear a lot of the the the, the, the restaurants or even uh, small shops, they're closing up. But those who are able to, to um, adopt, I'll take a case. Mendokuru ramen. <laughs> so delicious. <laughs> but the waiting line, one month. Think about it. But if they did not do something like that and the rest of the others, Jollibee, name it and so on, then the business would not actually grow and they would be stagnant, closing one shop to the other. So just like through life, we do, we listen, then it's something that everybody needs to adapt with this. It's the new normal. Let me cite another one where I came from. It's Trend Micro, the cybersecurity company. Our core value there is 3C plus I and T. It's actually customer, change, collaboration, innovation, and trustworthiness. So from there, uh, what happens is when you come in, even of whatever um, rank you are, you this culture of uh, customer change, collaboration, innovation, and trustworthiness is already ingrained. Just like our Lasallian, diba? We have our Lasallian values from the start of first year. Ina ano kana dinodoctrinate kana the same way. So you you got to adopt. Given that if you, you if you can't manage, then you, the door is always open. But the thing there, if if you are able to adopt to this, like for example, I'll take the case. Now we're just doing this um, virtual uh, virtual environment, or if you call it, we call it before for virtually organized. Like for example, for my case, operations, uh, since I handle the, the back end systems. So what happens is this kind of things, this is already normal for us. So when things change, uh, when things this come in, we're ready to adapt. But within the change curve, remember the first thing there is uh, there's a denial, but as fast as we can move to the acceptance and be able now to think on how we would be able to thrive in this new kind of environment with the innovation and the collaboration that's there, especially on the digital, we know the only one that survived now is the digital. So no matter if you're very young, elementary, or you're already very old, it doesn't matter. It's the adoption that you have to make. So the more you can easily adopt, then you're now being able to address a lot of things. And your business, if, if it's your business or your profession, you can easily go up back. And remember, guys, it's boundaryless na ngayon. So don't say na, okay, if I'm sales, let's say, oh, I'm sorry, I cannot sell. Hindi na pwede face to face. No, that does not reason now. Now, um, I would like to acknowledge because we do have participants now, Italy, California, we have also uh, the different parts of the Philippines. So 
see how how what the, the digital platform can do so basically innovation and the culture and the acceptance of change goes hand in hand so if these we bundle all together then we would be able to thrive in whatever things that we're doing okay guys i would encourage you at this point in time um to also talk would you like to open now your um video and also collaborate with us i know you have lots of good things to share so let's collaborate you open now your i know your your videos and if ever you can uh talk with us yeah Unmute your microphone. Yes, please unmute your microphone. Say first where you're coming from, who are you, and then tell us what, what you'd like to share. Let's make this discussion um, more engaging. So who among you would like to talk now and share your thoughts? Just open the mic. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> what is it? The shine. Don't be shy. Question here earlier. Maybe I could share the answer. So, si Amy had a, a question for me. Um, are there any incentives for managers, at least uh, at least in Facebook, to get for holding the position, um, especially if if the salary is the same? So, actually, my answer to that was, um, yeah, the the. the so our benefits are not tiered, like um, you know how in other companies, as you um, as you grow up the ladder, then you get bigger health coverage, etc., bigger room. So for one thing, um, the benefits are the same. So uh, um, and the salary, especially if you have the same level, are the same. So the benefit that they get is there are people who do love managing other people. Um, there are people who are extroverts who would love to nurture and coach and mentor. So the benefit that they get is having the ability to play to their strengths of managing people. Um, other than that, um, I guess, you know, I, I, it's still fairly the same and, and equal for, for a lot of us. So, so I know it's a strange, strange way of uh, managing a company, but I think that one of the benefits that we get is that People who want to be managers sincerely want to be managers. <laughs> like um, they're not forced into the position or they know what they're getting into. In, in fact, if you are an individual contributor, we have a workshop called Exploring Becoming a Manager. So it's a workshop where they will tell you up front, uh, this is, these are the things that you will have to do as a manager. Are you still okay to do it? And if you're okay, then, then yeah, you can like... Uh, Tell your boss that, hey, hey, I want to have a career path where I want to manage uh, a team. And then that's, that's sort of planned out for you. So, so thanks for that question, Amy. I hope that... Uh, yeah. To add also, Chai, uh, in some companies I've been with, um, they do encourage... Uh, it's actually divided. One is the technical track. The other is the managerial track. Mm. So we're in, um, especially you mentioned of introverts. Some introverts, they just like to work on their toys. So especially since I came from tech companies, they like to work on their stuff. They just want to be quiet, explore, innovate, and so on. Yun lang. And they were very happy with it. So the, what happens is, um, the company, what the company does is to create uh, two tracks. One is on the going managerial level. The other one is on the technical track, wherein you'd be hardcore developers, developing managers, and so on. So basically, like solution architects and so on. So basically, that's your track. For those who are on the managerial, let's say from uh, initial, uh, your staff and so on to project manager to whatnot on the managerial, uh, no. so you manage people, you manage developers and so on. Uh, so something like that, but even it's still that they're on the different track, you would see on the leveling, the grade level, they're almost the same. So kahit na sabi mo, okay, staff mo siya, but hey, wait. Baka kala mo, mas mataas pa sweldo sa'yo. So there are cases na ganun. So different companies have different ways of doing that based on also on how their culture is and also how they map out in terms of their human resource based on what the company is. Yeah. So yun. I see Miss, ano, Miss Marisa. Hi, thank you for turning your video on. Marisa Domingo. Ma'am, may question ba po kayo? 
Naka-mute lang po kayo. Maybe i-unmute natin si Ma'am Domingo. There you go. Ma'am, unmute nyo daw yung po, ano nyo, yung mic para yung... Uh, pero wala yata siyang audio. Uh, audio. Uh, Ayun, sorry, sorry. Hindi ako na Ayun pala. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm having difficulty with the internet. So I keep, you know, uh, okay entering lang. into the meeting hope, hoping that you would still be here. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Ayun po. May question ba po kayo? Ah, wala naman po. Ayun. Thank you nag-enjoy po. Lang, nag-enjoy lang ako ma'am sa presentation mo. Kasi different field. I'm from a different field. Hmm, ano po yung field niyo? Mathematics education po ako eh. Wow! <laughs> so, I, I, I enjoyed your your uh, insight on earlier on the, the screen. The, the smaller screen is more uh, effective. So, maybe I could use that in my online learning. Uh, yes! Yes. <laughs> presentation. Ma'am, yes. kung gusto niyo, what I can do, we have some educational... Uh, we have some materials for uh, educators from Facebook. Oh. What are the free platforms that you could use? I'll ah, okay. post the link maybe later in the okay. chat group. Natin. So you can Thank you, that. ma'am. Thank you. Thank yeah. you so much. <laughs> actually, Thank you. actually, I'm curious nga in the education world, right? Because, I mean, I have to admit, from what I observe, it's super traditional. I mean... Uh, Vinil, uh, I'm pretty sure, you know, uh, in, I mean, I love LaSalle. I'm a proud College of Computer uh, Studies graduate. But um, I remember there was a time that um, I was being asked to teach. But um, kaso mo wala akong master's or something. I don't know. I don't have a master's or a PhD. Or, but, but truth be told, I, what if, uh, some of my best professors when I was, well, were there, weren't, you know, um, academians. I would say they were business professionals because the, the things that they've shared with us were very practical. So, so I would love to see, you know, I would say the La Salle to go to a stage where we're, we're more sort of like flexible in terms of, of the culture. And uh, yeah, I mean, I know it, it, it's not going to be easy um, but I think yeah. it's achievable. So, so yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Bob. Uh, Chai, there's a question here. Um, uh, which, uh, is it possible for an administrator of Facebook page to post 360 photos ad that is also link ad? <laughs> <laughs> wow, it's a bit technical. Um, I'm not sure <laughs> the answer to that. Uh, I haven't seen one, so you know what? What I I I know it's gonna be a cliche, but if you go to Blueprint, you probably be, will be able to find out. Um, there's a creative hub there that would show you all of the formats that we could use on Facebook. So, so sorry, sorry, uh, sorry. But, uh, to it's coming from um, Joseph Market. Yeah, it, I think it came from Slido. Oh. Okay. Um, another question is, is it possible for Facebook page to schedule 3D photo ads, assuming that I have editor slash admin access to the page? If so, which platform will be able to do so? Anonymous question. So I don't think you can still de- do ads using a 3D photo. You can post it organically on a page or on your profile, but you c- still can't use it as an ad right now. Um, the bench may provocative question. <laughs> Why label people? Next, di ba? Why uh, label people? Everyone is somewhat, yeah, ambivert. Pwede rin. <laughs> uh, whether it's on the skill set. Yeah. Uh, Depends on the skill set. Yeah. Um, what else <laughs> we have here? Okay. Um, we're on our last 10 minutes, but before we continue, mag advertise lang ako ng ating ano. Um, oh. Okay. Since Mr. Joel wasn't able to uh, come to the talk, but we would like to ask you if those who are interested still to listen to his talk, if you can email me at my email address, that's marygraceopulentiad at gmail.com. And you place in the subject line, Amazon Talk. 
um, and also the institution where you're affiliated. Second, because most of you stayed until now and also would be interested in joining our next two days of activity, we are giving you a bonus. We're gonna raffle some prizes. And, but first, our action item. Remember that word, action item. Okay. And your action points is to first you like our, our Facebook page or also follow or share the DLSU Research Congress FB page. And then you can email me also at Mary Grace Opalentia D and then please put on the subject price. So I, uh, I would know all the names of all the participants. This would be raffled off on June 19th. What is the price? That's a question. Okay. One of the prices, uh, seems I'm with Crew Life, I'm giving you a free personal accident insurance. Yeah. Your email. Where's your email? Here, I'm typing it, but a bit slow. Lah. Sorry, sorry. Okay. Uh, yeah, they still have to do that because in Epcot, about, let's say, 15 years ago, they were doing voice recognition, like, as in as I, which is happening now, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, Siri and does that already, but uh, it was for the people who are disabled. And at that time, it was super slow, but now it's getting better. But they still have to translate Filipino and Korean words so that we can really view the Korean novellas. Okay. While we're waiting for Dean, I've uploaded... Um, University resources. Um, yeah. so these are the platforms that you can use. So, so for those who are in Zoom, uh, you could just check the chat box and you can already download that file. So it, it should have some of the tips and tricks. Mam Duming, Mam Lea. So, paano po kung gusto nyo magkaroon ng online learning for your students? Uh, these are some of the resources on Facebook that you could already use for free. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Okay, well, waiting for Dean Emmy. Uh, round robin muna tayo. Uh, Sir Bic, um, would you like to say something uh, before we go to Dean Emmy? Tapos eventually we closed up. And then next, uh, Alvin, go next. And then Chai. And then we can go to Dean Emmy afterwards for the final. Okay. You know, Mary Grace, my name is Benj. No. Oh, <laughs> I saw what oh, did it's, oh, I'm so I no, apologize. Sorry. Because remember, my whole name is very long. Bienvenido Lorenzo Castaneda. And yeah, <laughs> so tongue twister. I am local brown, pero hablas en español, entiende? No, hablo okay. español, sir. <laughs> That's why people just call me Bench. That's not a problem. Uh, no okay. problem. <laughs> Anyway, uh, maybe the, the last cue would be the words from Jennifer Lopez. And she said, no challenge, no change. Wow, so deep. Very short, right? Very yes, short. Yes. Oh, that's it. That's my parting word to you guys. So look for challenges. In other words, look for challenges, make opportunities, create new beginnings. And this is where, and you cannot do it alone. As I said, you have to be with a team. And this is okay. the, in fact, this is the concept of leadership. Leadership is not a person. Leadership is a role bequeathed to a person or groups of person that can lead the objective of the team to fruition. So that is leadership. Yeah, you can quote me on that. Okay. Uh, how about you, um, Sir Alvin? So we saw the. Uh, we are all unprepared for this uh, pandemic, no? Though hindi siya naman hindi siya talaga yung team ng ating research congress, but right now. Uh, from a face-to-face -face congress, we are now all in these boxes of frames in a, in a laptop. And uh, indeed, no, nobody saw this coming. But right now, uh, as we are facing a new quarter of the year, the, the, 
the second half of 2020, uh, it's inevitable talaga that changes is really right in our faces. And I think if Dr. Uh, if Sir Bench uh, quoted Jennifer Lopez, ako, I will just quote the very classic Charles Darwin, that the strongest <laughs> men will always be the ones who can be adaptive to change. So, yeah, it is hindi natin may iwasan, darating siya. In fact, um, I'm also studying the lines of Fourth Industrial Revolution and it was something that was coined way back in 2016. But of course, everybody's into, ah, ayaw namin work from home, nako, kasi internet connection, mababa. But, you know, every, all companies are forced to do work from home because of the pandemic. So, it is just the it's beginning. It's six o'clock. It's just the beginning of, uh, of a new era of, I would say, and in uh, of a revolution that we all have to face. So we as employees, we as individuals, we have to really embrace change and look forward for positive things that will happen out of this, uh, you know, innovation, technology, and of course the pandemic. That's all. <laughs> Chai. All right. So thanks for that, Vinil L slash LP and Bench. I, I think be, before I, I sort of give my, my parting words, I, I wanted to thank Grace. I mean, she has been the workhorse behind this. She has, we've been talking. Uh, it, was because, it was supposed to be initially for the COB week. The, yeah, it's yeah. a business, business and technology forum that, were, that was the one that we were initially trying to, to build up. Yeah, so she's super active with Puso and and for those who don't know, we were just supposed to have a small group on Google Meets, but you know, she got a Zoom subscription, made it, you know, for a hundred people, and then we're now live. So really, really thank you, Grace, for all the work that you do. We super appreciate it. Siguro, let's give her some Zoom Meranjang clapping hands. Uh, let's thank you, Gra thanks, Grace, for for um, you know helping us mount this this um, really really super um, interesting session and um, yeah with, with that um, I think that's the values that we have in Facebook move fast focus on impact you know be bold what would you do if you weren't afraid build, build social value Lahat na yan. that I think it's an, an encompassed with what Grace did and mm -hmm. if you were like someone who was working for Grace and you saw her doing that parang you will be inspired to do the same and that's the reason why I'm here so Thank you for that, Grace. And one other reason why I'm here is it's really for La Salle, you know. I mean, I want to sort of like hopefully be able to share, not just with, with the people who are watching, but with the La Salle community on the possibilities and what can be done. I mean, uh, if we are able to just make, not a lot, but even a few changes, uh, I think we can reach very far. Obviously, I, I have to say, but this is something I, I really want to help out parang DLSU with because you know we want to be there we want to be a, a you know the, the the one who's leading the change and drive it, be the driving force not the one who's following now just yeah. a quick one on that one I, I mentioned earlier that it really begins with leadership I mean no matter what we do at the ground para, it really begins with you I would love to work more <laughs> with um, DLSU leadership on how to drive this um, uh, one other uh, I, I, I spoke about how I was being invited to teach, but I couldn't, right? I don't have a master's, I don't have a PhD. Well, uh, I know, Vinil, I don't know if you can sort of explore this. One of the quick way, one of the quickest way to sort of help our students is to also help our professors. But to help our professors, we also need to expose them to what's happening or what's needed in the real world. So, ito, ano ka na to? Ito yung commercial ko. When I was back with the advertising agent, we were recommending what we call an externship. So instead of students working for companies such as advertising or Unilever or PNG, we get the academians, the professors, who work for companies for about a term or two so that they, when they go back, it's already equivalent to sort of real life um, experiences. So I would, you know, um, uh, love to see how we can better support La Salle. So, so I'm a proud, you know, CCS graduate who is back when called Intellect. And if there's anything that anyone is here, please, you know, reach out to me. Right. Thank you, Grace. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Thanks, Grace. The brain sphere, mm. not, actually, not actually me, it's the Emmy. 
So I'd like to welcome Dean Emmy. Uh, Dean, uh, pwede pong ano, some words? Yeah, okay. Hello. Hello, Miss Chai. Nice to meet you virtually. Yes, yeah. Yeah, of course, uh, I'd like to thank uh, the organizer, of course, number one is Dr. Luz and uh, the personnel of ADRAS helping out. And of course, uh, our our resource speaker for tonight, si Ms. Chai. And then yung ating mga uh, ever-ready faculty members would also become uh, resource speakers for tonight, si Sir Bench, or si Alvin. Okay, and then uh, to all those faculty, uh, all faculty members online in the Zoom room, thank you. And despite the, ano, the short notice, ano, meron tayong uh, uh, big, ano, big uh, room now for Zoom. So, yun nga, as I mentioned kanina, I had a message to Ms. Chai that we are really uh, in very grateful for her to, uh, in, ano, in sharing the free online course for digital marketing. Uh, of course, nowadays, as much as possible, we want to squeeze as much as possible from the cost. No? So we want to be cost efficient and we'd like to test first by doing the online free courses from Facebook. And then we have a lot of plans uh, only because of the pandemic that we cannot, we cannot send people out of the country to do digital marketing. But once this is over, people, faculty members will really go out and then do a lot of advanced studies on digital marketing. And then, uh, yun nga, uh, again, uh, thank you very much for accommodating us. And most of all, si Ms. Grace, uh, I, I really uh, no, uh, would like to extend my appreciation to her because out of the blue, I texted her, will you help us? Because there's no one from COB except for Dr. Ben who's doing the, you know, the, the talks. And we are the co-organizer of this year's research contest. And you fulfilled our, our um, uh, you know, obligation or our duty to share to our students. Kaya lang term break, ang, term break kami ngayon eh. If not, there will be more, more audience. But the, the students are all on vacation. <laughs> okay? Yeah. Thank you very much. Good night.